Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Cersei. I'm so excited to paint with y'all today. I am going to be doing another folk art inspired landscape. Um, so if you saw my last live, I went through a whole bunch of folk art inspired pieces that didn't make it to camera um, that I've been practicing and working on. This was one of them, a sample I painted. I didn't love it. There were some things I wanted to change about it. So I am going to do that today. I'm going to give it another shot, give it another life. Um, the other thing was I talked a lot about how sometimes things don't make it to camera because they're just a little too complicated and they take a little bit of time. This might be one of those times, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to try to break it down um, pretty easily in steps for you, but I might have to cut a little bit out just for the sake of size length of the video but we'll see so let me just clean up my palette here so I'm working in my B watercolor paper sketchbook um, I am using my Princeton velvet touch brush size 10 and I might pull in a smaller brush but I'll let you know um, probably a size I have a size 4 Princeton select next to me and my black velvet size 8 but just something smaller for some of these smaller lines and my core paint palette. So that's over here. I'm just mixing up some green in here. Um, so we're gonna start with, we got a bunch of elements to this piece and sometimes the biggest part is planning out like which elements you're going to tackle first, no matter what kind of painting you're doing, whether you're doing a realistic portrait or you're doing a moody landscape or you're doing an illustration kind of planning out your course of action can be really helpful in the beginning so I've already got my line drawing down for those of you who don't know if you need line drawings and I'm and I don't include them in the video, you can find them as a studio crew member if you join my studio crew all my outlines will be in there along with additional um, content um, that you can't get on YouTube, um, but all of the YouTube video outlines will be in there as well. All right, so I'm gonna start with actually, I think I'm gonna start with my sky, and then I'm gonna move to my hills um, and start painting them, and then we'll go from there, and then we'll start adding in details like the house and the bushes and the trees and top. But if I start with my sky, then I can let that dry and put in my trees afterwards. I'm using washi tape, because I wanted thin tape and B paper does not behave well with like other tapes that are too tacky. It's fine as long as you heat the tape up before you remove it. But I was like, oh, I have a little bit of washi tape. I hate washi tape. I feel like it doesn't actually stay down and create fine lines. So maybe it's just the washi tape I'm using. Did I get like super cheap washi tape or something like that? I'm pretty sure I paid too much money for it, for tape that I'm just gonna throw out eventually. Um, Anyway, that's my rant on washi tape. So I'm going to use actually a cobalt teal, which you can find in a lot of different brands, or it might be have another teal name or aquamarine. Um, but I'm going to use that for my sky. And I'm going to start darkest and go to lightest with like a gradient wash, but I'm going to rough it up a little bit, I think. So starting with my teal at the top and you can see I'm kind of scrubbing my brush along the top I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to create that flat wash back and forth I'm just and I definitely had some green in my brush still so I have a little bit of green in my sky up here that's okay Because this is a fantasy landscape. This is made up. I can have a purple sky if I want, or a yellow sky, or a slightly green teal sky. Just getting in between all these little cracks. Boop, 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 boop. And then I'm going to take some of this color and just drop it in in a few places. Again, I'm going for darker overall at the top and lighter towards the horizon, but I'm trying to create a little bit of a texture to it. I don't want it to be a perfect flat wash, but you can if you want to make yours a perfect flat wash. 
All right, and I'm going to let that dry and see what we get. All right, while that dries, I'm going to get some sap green and I'm going to add some cadmium yellow to it. I want these hills to be um, a very yellow green color for this particular one. So cadmium yellow, I'm just yellowing up my already pretty yellow sap green. Let me put this on camera for you so you can see. All right. And now I'm going to start down here. And first I'm going to actually lighten up some of my lines here. I don't want these pencil lines. So I'm going to skip. I'm not going to paint the path. I'm going to paint around the path. The path is going to be gray. And we have these kind of rolling pathways that just find their way up and through. So I'm going to water this down, get like a, a milky consistency. I'm going to start at the bottom. So I'm playing with texture a little bit today and not going for necessarily perfectly flat washes or perfectly gradient washes. And we're just going to see what happens. I'm just going to scrub this in. I do want to have nice lines though around my we go and we're gonna do this one over here let's turn this this way there we go And I'm going to drop in some color. It's very wet on wet, so it'll be very subtle, any texture that that leaves behind, because it's going to continue to bleed out. Maybe even just putting some straight sap green right in the corner there to really give it that darker texture. Maybe a little bit in this one, too. Although this one has already started to dry, I probably shouldn't have messed with it, but, you know. So you can see how this one doesn't bleed as much. So since I'm going to wet the whole thing again, this is how you get in trouble when you mess with things between drying stages. All right. So then I also have to do this one in here around the, um, the pathway but I'm gonna skip it because I don't want to run into that yet I'm gonna go up here and do this one while those continue to dry and I actually am gonna take some of this other color I cannot remember the name of it <laughs> it's the one yellow I use very the least often I'm looking for my color card um, which is right here Oh, my nickel azo yellow. Yes. So this is nickel azo yellow from core. Um, you can find this. I think Daniel Smith has one as well. And I'm actually going to put in a layer of this first. I still had some green on my brush, but this is a very rich yellow. Not quite as orangey it has more of a brownish undertone to it so not as orangey as like the diralite or a gamboge yellow but not quite as um a cadmium yellow as brilliant as a cadmium yellow or bright it's got a little bit more of an earth tone to it but still quite a beautiful yellow And I'm going to take some of that green and drop it right on top of this. Just going around my bushes 
and then blending it out. There we go. And then moving on, I'm going to take some more of that Nicolazzo yellow. I'm going to mix it with my green here on my palette. And I think this is going to look really great with the orange that I'm going to drop in here, the orange and gray. Um, and then I love, I'm loving the sky. Look at that. That beautiful cobalt teal color is, is creating some really beautiful texture. Although I don't think it's a granulating color. So this was dry enough, this edge here. So I'm going to go into this side. Paint that one. And this side. Doing pretty good on time so far, I think. I mean, we have a lot to do with the trees and the pathways and the bushes and the house still, but. All right, I'm just going to keep going through. And I'm just trying to vary the shades of these ever so slightly between the hills just so they're not all exactly the same but they're very similar and you can always go back with a second layer so you see here how these are very similar right here I can go back with a second layer and darken one of those and I'll make this one much lighter all the way in the back there and then this one too let's make this even lighter shade you can always go darker you can never go lighter. So when in doubt, put down a light wash and then reassess. There we go. This little separation here, as that continues to dry, I'll probably address it later with another layer. All right, now I need to do this one in here and then I'm definitely going to do another layer on here and maybe on this one to just darken them up a little bit. All right, so, oh, I got to get back to my original green. Or close to it. This might be different. Painting this last piece. Then we'll tackle the, um, we'll probably go over to the house next or the trees while this stuff dries. Uh, and then we can come back and do the pathways and the bushes. But we can't really do those until all this dries. And I'm definitely going to add a few more layers on some areas. So, all right, so that's. In, I'm going to go back over this one. And drop in some more sap green in the corner while this is wet. And just play up the texture a little bit. There we go. And then let's do that in this area. This area I definitely have to address around here where I did the nickel azo yellow and then I dropped in the green. And they separated. Either wasn't wet enough when I did it and their drying times were off, but that's okay.
And I encourage you to, you know, like you don't have to do it exactly like me. You can look at your colors and create your own versions of greens. Greens are so versatile. There's so many varying hues. There we go. And then I'm just going to do a light wash on this. And then this one, I'm going to just pick up a little sap green and some phthalo blue. I'm going to create like just a slightly cooler green. And I'm actually going to put that on this hill right here. Water it down. I don't want it to be super different, but slightly darker than the one in front of and behind it. just to give some separation between those areas. And this one over here too, I think I'm gonna go cooler in shade or in um, hue. I know I originally had that one really yellow and I changed my mind halfway through. All right, so I'm gonna let those dry. Um, and we're going to work on the house. So I am completely out of Payne's Gray. I'm waiting for more to come. It doesn't come till Wednesday. It is only Saturday. So that's like forever. So I have to either live with black or make my own gray. Um, I have, I do have neutral tint, but it's not really dark enough for what I want. I'm going to use some Cotman Ivory Black. And I'm going to add a little bit of Ultramarine to it. And that's a great way to make a paint gray. Um, ivory black is a little warm for a black. And adding ultramarine can give it like a little bit of a blue cast to it. Like it's very subtle. Let me add a little bit more. Because paint gray is like um, a cool, a very cool gray color. So... This is my version of a paint, a homemade Payne's gray. And then I'll show you what the ivory black looks like without any blue in it. I don't know if you'll be able to tell the difference on camera. Oh, I think you can. So, so this is the regular ivory black. You can see it has almost um, a warm, very reddish undertone where I added ultramarine to get this cooler um, tone of black. So. Black with a little ultramarine can get you very close to a Payne's Gray, a faux Payne's Gray. All right, so I'm going to start with the roof. This is all dry up here. The roof is going to be black. Now, I thought about um, making this a color, like the house a color, giving it like a red color, but um, I think I'm going to go with white like in this one, like I do like this color scheme. I just didn't like the execution on some of it. I'm gonna turn this around so I'm not putting my hand in all of my wet paint down there. I'm absolutely in love with this sky. I keep looking at it going, oh my God, that came out so good. I don't know if you ever paint something and like you try something and you're not sure you haven't, I haven't used cobalt teal for skies really. I've stuck to like phthalo blue and ultramarines and then of course like all kinds of funky colors for like sunsets and stuff but I haven't done any with this teal color and it almost gives me like a vintage um colorization feel to it like the polaroid era colors and I am loving it it's definitely going to be part of the Arsenal now, the repertoire of different colors. I'm just going to paint the windows in this color. We're going to go over them with um, bleed proof white to give them the window panes. I 
I've been really bad about leaving my brushes in water lately. So I don't know why. I just, I guess I got too many things going on and I keep rushing out of the studio thinking I've cleaned everything up. But I left this brush in the water and my silver black velvet overnight. Um, so the tips are, they're still there, but they're, they're a slightly funky. They're like just slightly curved. So the, the ferrule and all of that is still intact. I'm not losing any bristles or anything. So ugh, hopefully they'll, they'll be okay over time, but. Don't leave your brushes in water overnight. But if you do, if they're higher quality, they'll probably survive. Versus a super cheap brush would not have survived. It would be trashed. Or this one, I'm like, eh, I think I can still get away with it. I think it's okay. But you can see, like, the tip of this is just, I don't know if you can see, like, just a little funky, a little curved. And my silver black velvet one, same thing. Like the tip is still there. The tip is still really pointy and nice, but you can see how it just has that little curve on the end that you have to adjust for now. I have to adjust for. You don't because you didn't leave your brushes in your water overnight. So the next thing we're going to do after we finish painting in the windows, uh, we are going to go to the trees, I think, the canopy of trees at the top, and then the walkways or the bushes. Not sure which. And then lastly, we'll come back with some bleed proof white. So don't forget, if you are enjoying these videos, please subscribe, like the video, comment. I love seeing your comments. You can also leave super thanks comments um, by clicking on the thanks button, and that will allow you to also leave a contribution or support contribution for me and my work. Um, you can check out the description of the video that will have information about um, supplies we use, links to my Instagram account um, and other social media accounts, my website. Um, what else is in there? Oh, studio crew. If you want to join the studio crew, that'll all be in there. Now I am hesitant <laughs> to cover up this beautiful sky with this canopy of trees. So I think I'm going to be really sparing with how much I let show through and I'm going to do more branches like high branches but really just a little bit of a tree canopy up here because I love the sky so much and if these pencil lines weren't in here already I might not even put in trees but I have to put in something all right so sap green I do want this to be a much cooler blue so I'm going to do sap green and phthalo blue And then a tiny bit of alizarin crimson. I'm going to desaturate this a little bit. There we go. All right, so for the canopy, it's going to be real simple. We're going to take our brush and we're just going to start to blot it across the top. I'm going to dip my brush in water. And these kind of go all the way across. I put pencil marks all the way across. You could concentrate them in a corner. You don't have to. Come down a little bit on a few of them and just adding some water because we're going to have a lighter layer and I'm definitely going to do um, uh, to cover up so much my sky. That's all right. I can paint another sky that I will love. All right. And then I'm going to drop in some more color on top. even darker in just a few areas. So just trying to create a little bit of varying values in our tree canopy. Probably should have put another one over there. All right, 
I'm going to leave it for now. I can always go back and add more later. All right, so I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to switch to my silver black velvet because it's what's sitting here. Um, I'm going to use that black, but I am going to add some alizarin crimson to it to make and a little cadmium yellow. So I'm making brown, but I use my black cadmium yellow and alizarin crimson. So it's basically just a dark, a dark orange. But I want it to be more, I want it to be dark. I don't want it to be super black, but I don't want it to be like red brown either. And I am just going to put in these really thin tree trunks. Now, would tree trunks look like this in reality? No, they would not. That comes down to like the whimsical nature of this or like the stylized naive, you know, I'm just putting in a symbol of a tree trunk. That's the naivete of folk art. All right, so we have in these really tiny, thin. And now I'm going to put in the secondary branches, reaching up into the canopy. So nice and thin. I love this look. These like really dramatized trees by making everything kind of really skinny, really tall. Gives them these this like tall elegance to them. I think I'm going to put another one over here just because ending it right here, but having all this canopy over here feels like something's missing. So I'm going to put another one right here. Let's just finish these up. Washi tape is coming up. Who out there likes washi tape? I hate it, but I know people love it. But I feel like it just it gives up on me too early. Maybe it's because I just use a lot of water and a lot of heat. All right, there we go. Done with my trees. And we can think about putting in shadows later. All right, so we have to do the path and the bushes. So let me tackle the bushes first. I don't know why I'm nervous about the path. And we have to put a little bit of shading on the house as well. Uh, okay, so the bushes I'm going to do in an orange. I have an orange here. You can definitely make your own orange. Um, I have a Quinn Gold that I really like, um, but if you wanted to use like a little, let's see, let's see what happens if we mix, here, let's move this to the side. So I'm going to use Quinn Gold. A lot of people are like, well, what do I use to make Quinn Gold? Well, Quinn Gold is tough uh, to make exactly, but you can definitely make a beautiful, brilliant orange. Okay, so if I take my Diorolide yellow or a Gamboge yellow, okay, so that's this beautiful, rich yellow color, and I'm going to add some of, I don't know if I should do permanent scarlet or cadmium red. I'm going to try permanent scarlet, but I think that's not going to be quite right. So that's a beautiful, brilliant orange. And now let's see what happens when I do the diorolide yellow and cadmium. Okay, 
So that is another beautiful orange, but not quite Quin Gold. So here's Quin Gold. It just has a little bit of an earth tone to it, um, but we're pretty close in this area. So any of these orange colors, you can see they're all very similar. So go with any of them. All right, so I'm gonna water my Quin Gold down. To be a nice light color. And then we'll add some shadow onto it later. So I'm just gonna fill these in. These are bushes. They have texture. You don't have to worry about them being a little texturized. We'll worry about the separation in round two. So let's fill these in. And if you want, I'm, I'm going to definitely add some more color towards the bottom on my second layer, but I'll just drop some in now. There we go. All right, we're gonna let that dry and then I will put a second layer on them. So our pathways are gonna be gray. I'm just gonna use my ivory black. I'm gonna water it way down, add a little ultramarine to it to get that slightly blue tint. But I want it to be a nice light gray first. So we're just gonna fill these in light gray and we'll put some shadows in to give them a little depth. This is a nice neutral color. So this is where it's like, oh, these all these little details that I have to kind of still address and I get worried that it's gonna be too long of a video. But thank you all for sticking with me if you're still here and watching. All right, so we put our pathways in. I'm gonna pick up a little more and now I'm gonna put a shadow on this side of the paths. Is that there's like a light source over here somewhere just casting a little bit like the hill itself is casting a little bit of a shadow or the light source is yeah you know what I mean all right let those dry pull out a little color there there we go I'm going to let those dry and see if we need any more, um, another layer on there. Let's put, take some of that same light, light gray, and I'm actually going to give, so if I have light coming this way, like on the path a little bit, now this isn't a super strong light source, but I'm going to paint this side of the building that's facing away from that. This would have a little light on it. It would be more white or a lighter gray. I'm gonna paint this side slightly gray. So you can see there, it's very subtle, but it will make a difference. And then under the eave itself, you can add even a little bit darker of a shadow. There we go. And I didn't even paint in this, give this a little bit of an edge to it. All right, so what do we have left? We have to put in our bleed proof white um, to make the windowsills. And I'm gonna put in another little bit of shadow on the bushes here. So they're not completely dry yet, so I'm gonna give them a little dry. Bring out the heat tool. All right, so I'm gonna take another round of that color and I'm gonna go along the bottom here. Fill in all of these little white gaps. All 
And again, light is kind of coming from this direction. So we're going to play into that. But it's subtle. There's not like super bright highlights anywhere. I'm just going to blend out. And they're slightly darker on this side towards the bottom and the back. And if you want to give it shadows, you could. They're kind of tucked behind there. So the shadows would be like right here, but I, they wouldn't come up on this hill really. Um, I'm not going to mess with shadows too much on this one because we got a lot going on. But you definitely could like add some shadows to the trees, like over the hills this way. But I kind of like I kind of like the subtleness of this. All right, moving on to bleed proof white. Get out my bleed proof white, and you can decide what kind of windows you want, how many panes you want. If you want them to be really tall, and just like four panes, but really tall ones, or six, eight. You can measure these out ahead of time. I will not because I am. I'm lazy. All right, so I'm going to definitely do one right down the middle. And then I'll decide what I want to do. The only thing I want to make sure to do so it doesn't get too wonky is make whatever lines I make this way parallel to this top of the frame. So if I do four, then they're just really big and tall. So I'm going to do three. I'm going to do one here and one here. I am not good at parallel lines. I'm just putting it out there. I am not good at it. So I already feel like they're not quite parallel. They're a little too straight. But we're going to go with it. And then that's tucked behind there. So there we have that nice little. And then for this one, hmm. I guess I could add them in. I'm just going to do a four way in this one and I'm actually going to outline the edge of that one over there. There we go. Now you can add in all kinds of other details if you want to add in more foliage, something really in the foreground in this area. Um, there's so much more you could do with this, but this is a great kind of base layer um, painting. I really enjoyed painting it with you. Let's take off our washi tape and see what we have. I do like the color. I would probably even go back and do another layer on my bushes. I love the sky. And look at those, that nice thin little border. Okay, washi tape, you did a pretty good job. Although there is a little leakage right here and here, but it's okay. I love that thin little border that you gave me. So thank you so much for painting with me today. It was such a pleasure. I hope you try this out. I can't wait to see your attempts. If you want to post them somewhere online, you can find Umbrella Arts Academy with Shana Searcy in Facebook. There's a Facebook group there where people can post their um, uh, paintings that they paint with me. So I hope to see you in there and thank you so much. Don't forget to check out that description and have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy painting y'all.